Well, welcome back into the Mid Norfolk Cottage Garden. And it's a beautiful spring morning. We've got bird song, as I hope you can appreciate, in the background, and peppering the floor down by this pond at the bottom of our woodland garden is this bank of wild primrose which is just really coming into its peak at this time of year. These little plants are a lovely addition to a woodland planting and we've actually extended these on the videos we shot last week. You may have seen them where I use this identical plant interspersed with particularly the very early small daffodils in the herbaceous borders as early spring colour. Every so often with these they'll throw off a surprise. Just look in the difference genetically between these two plants growing side by side. Large flowered one there and to its side this really delicate smaller flowered slightly greener in colour and next to it a natural genetic mutation how the plantsmen's over the last couple of hundred years have developed polyanthus and the fancy varieties but this one hasn't been planted here this is just a genetic sport that's just seeded in and is growing away perfectly happily and we'll cross back with these you'll get a variety of colours thrown off these little plants but they will seed quite prolifically and they love this sort of very shallow cut grass environment on these sunny banks. Just let me show you an area of seed. And here you are, a little easy to miss, right in the middle of the path that is mown down towards the compost heaps. At the bottom of this dell is this little example of a newly germinated seedling, probably germinated the end of last winter and is now just starting to grow away in the path. A year on and you've got a plant forming quite an established little crown with multiple leaves coming up and this is already showing you what the flower is going to be like on that. One year later and you've got a proper crown growing away. Multiple little plants effectively on a shared root system but we're going to show you the propagation of these and how easy it is even at this stage to get multiple plants out of one of these little plants. If it was left to grow away then you'll end up with where we started. A massive multiple crowned plant like this. All genetically related, all identical flowers, but again this could be split by digging it up and you'd probably get 20 or 30 plants out of this. But let's just show you a smaller example because to disturb something like this in full flower is a bit of a <laughs> wrong thing to do to be honest just to enjoy that one this time of year if you're going to split something that size best to do it a little later on i suggest the example we're going to use for propagation is this little crown here it's right in the middle of our mown path which means it's going to get its hair cut every time I come down here with the tractor later in the season. Not ideal for it in terms of its growth or for it to seed, so we're going to dig this up and I'm going to show you how many plants I can get from this one little crown. Just looking at that, probably only going to be two or three. Spade into the side. Don't have to go too deep with these, it's quite a superficial root system. Let me just try and take that plant out without removing too much of the other plants around here. So we've got some nice young campion plants coming up which will flower beautifully later in the season. The roots on these polyanthus or primulas, primroses really, tend to be quite fibrous. And I'm going to have, I think, to put the camera down to start clearing the root system around here to show you what we've got up. So we'll just take a break and do that and come back on film. Okay, well here we go. Cleaned out and you can see the root system on the base. And at the top we've got a joined, very thick and fibrous system with two shooting crowns on it. 
Now what we want to do is divide those by taking them in to two separate parts but retaining a good amount of root growth on each one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just tear these apart but what you could do is divide these with a, a knife or a pair of scissors or secateurs. Let's just see if they'll come apart naturally and give us a good crown with some root. All right, so I've divided those two and this is very clearly the original plant which has retained the majority of both the thickened root and the root base and crown and this is the little side spur that was growing off it which again you can see the break where it's broken away from the main crown but that's got perfectly adequate and a good root system on it to plant away into this very moist soil and should grow away so divided that into two both of which can be planted immediately as flowering plants into a position that you'd like them to grow away in. We've brought that little primrose round into this area of the garden where we are combining a uh, planting at this time of year of this rather nice blue hyacinth that we've planted en masse and is still just starting to emerge and flower with an underplanting of this lovely pale yellow primrose and we've got a few gaps in here so what I'm going to use that primrose that I've divided is pop it into this border just to try and thicken up the primrose flower you'll see ones that we've done last year which is still getting established and coming on this is in shade at this time of year because of the big oak tree just to the south of it but in a week or so this will start really popping and a lot of these hyacinths still got a lot more colour to bring on and I think if we can get this end of the border looking more like that end and the density of the colour at this time of year it will really give us a lovely display.